The economy is in the gutter, mortgages exploding, inflation soaring, a generation of young people unable to leave their parents' basements. Small wonder, perhaps, that many major studies suggest that millennials and Gen Z want to ditch capitalism altogether. Can we blame them? So has capitalism failed them? Or actually, as one of my guests is about to argue, is it our best hope? To make the case for capitalism, as Fraser Nelson, the esteemed editor of The Spectator, and Ava Santina, sitting next to me, will doubtless be foaming at the mouth, ready to re rebut what Fraser's about to say. So, Fraser, off you go. A defence of capitalism. Well, it's better than any alternative you can measure. That's quite simple. It has been the, easily the biggest force for good in the world over the last couple of decades, especially. We've seen global poverty rates absolutely collapse. Um, we've seen health, wealth, education, um, levels of um, child mortality. I mean, right, the level of world poverty has never come down faster. So we're living in a golden age of poverty reduction. Sure, the last couple of years are, have been pretty difficult. Um, nobody's saying they haven't. Um, the free market economy, the free enterprise system means things will go up and down. But the overall trend is absolutely transformative. Since China started to get more sort of capitalistic in its um, in business dealings, its poverty has gone through the floor. The same is true with India. So I think we've now got decades worth of hard facts which prove just how, if you want to tackle poverty, if you want to promote fairness, globally, then capitalism is the way to go. OK, Ava, I can see you nodding away furiously. No, you weren't. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, the stats speak for themselves, don't they? Everything Fraser just said is, is demonstrably true. Well, I think in broad strokes, yes, but I'll just take a little bit of issue with what um, Fraser had to say there about poverty, because, I mean, actually, the truth is we currently have 14 million people in the country who are living below the breadline or at least living hand to mouth every month. And that is actually pretty similar to what we saw in the 1970s. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue that we should suddenly go, you know, full Venezuela. But I do think there is an argument for, re, you know, reconstructing the welfare state, which has been left threadbare by, you know, what, 20 Where years. has your socialist dream actually worked? Uh, the NHS. Because obviously Venezuela, it completely ruined the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would point you towards our fantastic healthcare system, which is a socialist, you know, socialist in principle. And I would also argue that, you know, social housing was very good for many people. I mean, I'm sure you're a big fan of Right to Buy. I'm sure Fraser is as well. It was a fantastic programme, innately socialist. What is your, what is your actual problem with capitalism? I, have, I don't have a problem with capitalism as a concept. I think British capitalism, which is what we're seeing right now, and, you know, the, the strain that we have, the, the focus that we have on paying out dividends to shareholders and hoping that somehow this kind of trickles down and feeds people at the bottom, that's a system that is demonstrably not working right now. That's what we need to look at. Fraser, are there two issues here? One, that generally speaking, going back 100 years, you can argue, as you've done successfully in this piece, that capitalism... Do, as, De been demonstrably successful in many parts of the world, but the right now, this country is in a bad place, and partly that could be put down to some of the capitalist policies. Well, it depends what you mean by capitalist policies. I mean, capitalism, in many ways, is just a, a funny word that people give to the basic notion of freedom. If you look at North and South Korea, no prizes for guessing which of those two countries is doing best. And, you know, in the 50s, it was North Korea that was doing best. But that's on a, a global basis. Of course, if you have freedom, politicians will use that freedom to make wrong decisions. In which case, if you print money, if you borrow your way out of every single problem, then eventually there will be a price to pay for that. We're seeing that now in terms of inflation. We're seeing that now in terms of dysfunction of the welfare state. But I think when it comes to the welfare for state, by the way, it's hard to blame capitalism on that. That is the government, which is coming out with pretty bad policies, keeping five million people on out-of-work benefits and using mass migration to try to fill the many gaps in, in, the, in the employment market there. So when, we, when I talk about capitalism, you're basically talking about, um, about private property, about free trade, about exchange, about basically e economic liberalism. Now, that is a system that can be done well or can be done badly, but as a system, it's better than any other that's ever been invented. And I struggle to think of many people thinking, actually, here at Venezuela or any other of these socialist countries is doing much better than we are now. We've got our problems, but fewer of them than the um, socialist and communist countries. Right. Ava? I think it might be more helpful probably to look closer to home. I mean, if we look at Denmark, if we look at Germany, we're actually the poor man of Northern Europe. And if you actually look at some of the research put out by the Labour Party not so long ago, we are actually on track to be poorer per capita than Poland. 
by 2030. I mean, that is absolutely insane. If you look at countries like Denmark, if you look at Norway, they've got higher tax than us, they've got a better welfare system, and the people there are healthier, they are happier, and they are actually more prosperous. So hammering down on people in this sort of... But what does that have to do with capitalism as a concept? Well, OK, if we look at the, the sort of capitalism that we're experiencing at the moment, inequality has widened, OK? So there's no... There's a shrinking middle class. There is actually no middle. So you've now got the super rich and you've got the rest of us who are now actually classified as super poor. There needs to be some kind of scaffolding that pulls these people further into the middle so that more people can achieve under capitalism. Have we got, Fraser, in this country right now, a poor performing capitalism? In other words, the concepts, I completely concur with you about the concept, is it being executed badly by a long-running conservative series of governments? I'm afraid so. The Conservatives, every time they get into trouble, they think they will steal Labour policies if they tend not to work very well. As a result, you're seeing a trend in Europe right now where voters are turning to the right, from Greece to Finland. Um, in Britain, you, you were likely to get a Labour government at the next election. That's because the policies people are angry about, the overextending of the environmental regulations, the highest taxes for 77 years, the huge government spending out of all proportion to its usefulness, they have all been brought about by a Conservative government. So sure, we can compare ourselves against Poland, Sweden, Norway, Germany, all of them capitalist countries. The question is if capitalism done well or done badly. And I'm afraid to say that this big government conservatism, which tends not to trust people with their own money and tinker around to pretty bad results, is showing uh, right now as a case study in capitalism not done particularly well. If you print money, if you print most of the 400 billion you used for the furlough during the lockdowns, you've closed down an economy, you're messing with people's lives, you're messing with the free market, and there will be a big price to pay, as we're currently discovering. Ava, can we end this debate with you agreeing with Fraser? I can agree on two premises, but not on the conclusion. I think the taxes are too high, but I would say that in, tax in countries where the taxes are higher than we have here, people are happier and it's better spent. I think the problem is the stewardship of the economy, not the system that we're living under. A final question, Fraser, for you, given I've got you here. Who's going to be buying The Spectator? <laughs> Maybe you, Piers. I don't know. It depends. <laughs> There's going to be a long and illustrious list of people. The greatest magazine in the world is currently up for auction, and I imagine it's going to be a very busy summer with lots of people wanting to avail themselves of the opportunity of a lifetime if they can afford it. Well, you're the Manchester United of magazines, uh, aren't you? And uh, <laughs> quite right, there should be a frenzied bidding process. Uh, but good luck with that, Fraser. Anyway, you've, you've done a great job at The Spectator. Great to have you on the programme. Appreciate it. Ava, lovely to see you.